We're in the mountains, and they look pretty snowy. So, my guess is, is that we're going sledding today! Woohoo! And we might as well, because it is getting close to that time where spring is about to spring over here in the United States, or from all over the world. Well, specifically for the Northern Hemisphere. I know that both the Northern and Southern Hemispheres have different types of, uh, what do you call it? They have different types of seasons based on the climates that they have between both sides, but for the Northern Hemisphere, it's getting close to springtime, and we might as well take this opportunity to go skiing while we can. So, hey everybody, it's Double RPG here, and welcome back to another episode of Double RPG Let's Play with the uh, the live commentary series with Super Mario World 2 Yoshi's Island on the Super Nintendo. In today's episode, we are getting started with the first four levels of World 5. So, what do you say we hop in our skis and let's get on with this episode that's already in progress, shall we? And we're going to start off with level 5-1 to kick things off. And rightfully so. So, anyway... Blizzard! So that's just the name of this level. It's called Blizzard! And as soon as we start moving, <laughs> there definitely seems to be a blizzard that's going on. And oh my gosh, we have a uh, pyro lakitu or a fire lakitu that just came out of nowhere and is trying to shoot down fireballs down at us or down to the ground to try to hurt us. So I guess you could say it's the his attack is the equivalent of the fire sumo from... Uh, from Super Mario World, but that's even being way too generous right there. And he's not really stomping on any grounds whatsoever to try and make the the lightning bolt come down to where fire will actually just fall down out of nowhere. So yeah, very trippy. Oh, is he ever gonna go away? Lakitu, I told you that nobody likes you, buddy. But evidently, you do not listen. No, you do not. Bollocks to you. So, anyway, how is everybody doing on this lovely Saturday? Hope you all are just enjoying your day, and I hope most of you are getting very excited for Tales of Graces F launching, uh, I think it's launching on the 13th in the United States. So, yeah, this is actually some pretty good news for all of us U.S. people, and we're finally seeing another Tales game after we've been in the drought for about four years after Vesperia launched, but... Uh, but of course, I say a new one because, let's face it, Tales of the Abyss 3D is a 3DS port of the PS2 game that released back in 2006. So, yeah, first time in uh, the first time in four years where we're getting a new Tales game finally. And it's about time, too, because I was really getting sick and tired of having to wait quite a while. And with many people still wanting Tales of Vesperia on the PS3 to make it over here, but... Evidently, it it seems like it's one of those things that's in limbo right now. I keep hearing uh, rumors about my Microsoft paying for the exclusivity of the game, and I keep hearing rumors that they don't uh, that they don't have the exclusive rights to Tales of Vesperia on the PS3. Well, which makes sense because let's face it, it's officially a Namco property, so that means they could release the PS3 version, which they did in Japan, but. Why they did not release the PS3 version in the West, I guess we will never know. But anyways, but yeah, I am very happy that we're going to be seeing Tales of Graces F, and I'm going to be playing the crap out of it. And I think it'll be the first time where I actually get interested or where I'm going to play heavily on a Tales game that is done by, or where the character designs is done by Mutsu... I think it's Mutsumi Inomata, if I'm not mistaken, who worked on the character designs for Tales of... Who worked on the character designs for most of the Tales games, but where her first start was Tales of Gra... Not Tales of Graces, but Tales of Destiny on the PlayStation 1. So, yeah. Hopefully, I'll get more interested into doing a Let's Play of that. And I should be able to, but I'll have to see. And... And, of course, Kid Icarus Uprising is releasing this month, finally. And that's one I'm going to be spending a lot of time with, and hopefully I'll have enough money on my hand to get Ninja Gaiden 3 for the PS3 when it comes out around the same time as uh, same time as Kid Icarus Uprising, but something tells me I probably won't be able to, but I'll have to see. But I'll tell you one thing that I am going to be getting uh, this April when it comes is the game... Oh, crap, I lost. Because I screwed up. 
Oh well, we got a lot of items, so who cares? But yeah, by around this, when this April comes, that means that Xenoblade Chronicles is finally releasing in the U.S., and I'm definitely going to be picking that up. And there is a new rumor going around that Xseed is actually planning on releasing uh, the last, yeah, the last story in June of this year. That actually could be very super, but uh, the one thing that I was kind of hoping for was that they have a different dub of the game, so that way we have our own dub while the European audience has their own, but evidently that's not going to happen. It seems. Oh, oh, unless if they decide to change change it up a bit, but uh, it's kind of hard to it's, it's kind of hard to say at this point. But anyway, who am I kidding? The game's going to be great regardless. And uh, what else is coming out this year? And and hopefully do, uh, they do release, I mean, uh, hopefully they do give some newer information about the Wii U and when it will launch and what price it will be when it launch. And I really do hope it launches at at least $300 because of it being a next-gen system. And I definitely think it might as well be that price because I really don't want them to go overboard with them releasing the Wii U at a much bigger price than it already is. I mean, I know it's supposed to be 50% more powerful than the PS3 and the 360, but I really don't want it to go overboard in terms of the price. And this really got my goat when I heard about, when, when I found out about Michael Pachter's pred uh, prediction about Nintendo's future, and he painted a really, really, really grim picture on Nintendo's future because of the Wii U. And he, the reason why he painted a grim picture on Nintendo's future was because Nintendo has not yet announced a price point for the Wii U. And Nintendo, uh, and they haven't even announced a release date yet. I mean, I can understand where he's coming from and, uh, and what he, what he's all saying, but one of the things that really kind of irked me a little bit was that he said that the Wii U needs to launch at $250 because the PS3 and the 360 with the Kinect bundle are priced around that same price point. And I got, all I got to say to that is, you know, with somebody demanding that price needing to be at $250 when the older gen systems are at that same price, that's not even realistic. I mean, I can understand where he's coming from and saying that Nintendo needs to launch the Wii U at a competitive price when it when it comes out, but $250 when the older gen systems are at that same price, that is not, that is very, un, very unrealistic, by all means. And... And he even made this point about where he said that uh, he that Nintendo will not be able to obtain the casual crowd because they have moved on to tablet and smartphone gaming. Well, that may be true, but what he forgot to take into account was that Nintendo said that they are trying to recapture the hardcore audience. You know, people who play really awesome games like the Ninja Gaiden series, the current reboot series, or maybe even something like... Uh, even like maybe Darksiders, or for some of you guys who like those first-person shooters like Battlefield 3 and Call of Duty and all those games. Yeah, Nintendo is trying to do their best to try to recapture that crowd because they feel that with the Wii, they have that's one of the primary targets that they lost during the life cycle. But, you know, I don't think they've totally lost it. I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of people that still play the first-party games, and I've been hearing some really good things about Mario Party 9, and and as much as I really like the Nintendo 64 Mario Party games and the DS game, I think Nintendo has kind of pulled themselves out of the mud to try to revolutionize the franchise now, or reinvent the franchise to where it actually becomes more, more, and more enjoyable. Sorry if my speech got a little out of the way because of that stupid toady. And I finally got Mario back. Oh, cool, a ring of coins. Man, I wish that Lakitu would go away because it's really starting to get my goat big time! Ugh, but I digress. Oh, where's the other one? It's gotta be around it. Oh, okay, got it. Oh, cool, red coin up there for the win. You know, with us taking this long to get through a level, I think we might be able to get through it all at 100%. Anyway, I'm gonna see if I can try to get there, so I'll be right back. Okay, let's try it again. 
And let's bounce on this penguin. Oh, a cute little penguin! Oh, get up there. Okay, there we go. Now, uh, can we get in there, please? Yes, we can. Oh, cool. That means we're gonna play Sacrifice- Oh, no, 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 no. Dang it. We were gonna use two shells to sacrifice inside that flower. But, to be honest, do we really even need to do a sacrifice? Ugh, though I missed. Big time. Okay, let's try it again. Alrighty. Let's try to uh, aim you right here. Yeah, to be honest, I really don't think we need to do that much sacrificing. I mean, we got all 30 stars, so we might as well go ahead and leave that other one as it is. So, anyway. If one of them, if one, if some enemy, yo, like that enemy gives us trouble, then we could possibly head on back. And evidently, we do not have any eggs to try to attack that piranha plant. Gosh, I can't believe you just did that! Stupid enemy! How dare you! Okay, let's go ahead and try this again, finally. And speaking of games that I'm actually planning on renting or trying out, I heard that the new SSX came out this week, and for those of you who got who bought the game, I want to know what your honest thoughts are on it. If you think it's definitely a return of something that was missing this current generation that became a big hit in the last, which I definitely think that is the case, but, uh, you know, I like to hear it all from you. What do you think? Okay, so, anyway... We actually do need to get that switch that's being barricaded by a bunch of... What do you call it? That's being barricaded by a bunch of dirt. And we can knock it off, but first things first, we definitely do need to get some of the eggs from... Oh, gosh, are you gonna leave me alone? Seriously! Leave me alone! Creep! Okay. With us having four, I think we're good. Okay, where is it? Okay, there you are. Shut you up. Okay, very good. Oh, and there was a switch right there? Oh, come on. That's not realistic. And I think I got all the red coins, so... I think we pro probably did ace this level. Okay, so we get ourselves a bonus challenge after completing that. So it looks like this will be a little bit longer of a video to get through, so... Just brace yourself, gamers. It's gonna be quite a trip. And cool, we did manage to ace that level from beginning to end. Very nice. Okay, we're gonna play roulette again, and I guarantee we're not gonna be getting... We're not gonna be getting any more lives than what we currently already have. But we'll just place 10 lives to bet here to see if we can actually get any more. Ugh. Dang it. We cannot get any more than what we already had. It's pretty much hit and miss with this mini game or this bonus challenge. But let's go to level 5-2. And these look like ski lifts, so we're going to be dealing with ski lifts in this level. So let's take a look. Ride the ski lifts. Yeah, I knew it was going to be ski lifts in some way. And look, it's all blizzardy. I mean, it's all snowy. So does that mean we're going to go skiing in this level? And eh, not quite. We haven't even made it that close just yet. But we will be able to as soon as we can. You know what? How about I do this? You know, you can jump on their head and grab those. And evidently, I did not seem to get the memo. Oh, that didn't even work. And can I get the other one, please? Here, just... Ugh, dang it. Now we're not going to be able to get 100% of this. I'm sad. I'm sad. If we, if we do get a near-perfect score... And if we don't end up getting 100 because of that one little mishap... Oh, man, I'm not going to be happy. I can't believe I'd miss, on, miss out on something that was easy to spot. But... What can you do? 
And I really like the design on the background. Kind of looks like a coloring book. Definitely way ahead of Kirby Dreamland 3 in terms of the art design, so yeah. Yep, we missed that coin. I want to just beat myself in the head with a stick because we missed out on it. Alright, so let's see if we can try at least get a near-perfect score, which we should be able to. What do we get? Oh, cool. We got ski lifts where we can jump on them. Or we could jump on them if we want to. Oh, dang it. I missed. I wanted to get that one up. <laughs> and, and dead gummit, there are more Lakitu's here. It's really pissing me off. Oh, cool. We got ourselves a flower. Oh, cool. There's some eggs that were hiding right there. And we got ourselves some Starmen. That's very nice. And if we wanted to hit the switch again, we could just... We could just do this. And I don't know why I keep wasting eggs. I could have just at least... Uh, grab... Uh, or not grab, but, you know, jump into the... What do you call it? I could have jumped into the dirt and got that switch to come down, but evidently, I didn't do it. Yeah, that's where things start to get a little bit more intricated in terms of the level designs and, I mean, the level design and what all you're trying to obtain, so. Anyway, we need, we need to go hit that other switch, or that other question mark cloud, or that hidden cloud, or whatever. No, it wouldn't be hidden, because, um, it's, you can clearly see it, it's very visible. Oh, we can hit that switch again if we want to, so I guess it respawns after we use it once. So, that's good to know. Lakitu. <laughs> I swear to god, I'm gonna I'm gonna beat you senseless if you don't even leave me alone. Seriously. Your presence is not wanted in this Mario game! Leave me alone. Wish I could just take your cloud so that way I can right at halfway across this whole ski lift area. Anyway, I think we're just gonna just haul butt. And I think we got all the red coins in this area, so anyway, let's hit this middle ring and let's go to the next area. And Yoshi got all puff cheeks there because he was he swallowed a penguin, which he can't even squash. We cannot even go down that pipe for some odd reason. Oh well. Okay, so we got snowmen who are skiing. Awesome. And it disappeared right before my eyes. And I did mention that last week, or I did mi- uh, did it- was it last week? Uh, yeah. I did mention that last week that I picked up Metal Gear Solid 3D- I mean, Metal Gear Solid Snake Eater 3D. And one of the things that really surprised me that, uh, that they replaced in the game was that they replaced the Karaten frogs with Yoshis. And that is the second time where Metal Gear on a Nintendo platform has a cameo of that of a Nintendo character. I think there was something else too, but for the most part, it was mostly consisted of Yoshi, so that was actually pretty cool. And you have to find the Yoshis, and you have to shoot all of them if you want to get the stealth item, or the stealth camouflage item. I thought that was actually pretty cool to see... To, to find out that Yoshi is actually in the game, but you have to shoot at him to try to make him, um, or to, for the hit to count, and that way you can actually gain the stealth camouflage at the end. Because in the, in all other versions of Metal Gear Solid 3, you had to find the Keratan Frogs in order to do that, so. In this game, no Keratan Frogs, it's Yoshi all the way! Yippee! So happy. And I know NCS would be proud if he played Metal Gear Solid 3, but evidently he has not played any of the Metal Gear Solid games. And I know Proton John would be really happy to play that game, and I'm pretty sure he has it on him right now, so... Props to you, buddy. Even though we don't know each other, but props to you, good sir. Oh, penguins. No, no, no! Can I get up there? Can I get up there? Oh, can I get up there? Please, can I get up there? Oh, yeah! Look, I got skill! I got skill! <laughs> I didn't even think I was going to make that, but look at me now! I got myself some skill for making it up there! 
Okay, let's see, what do we have? Yes, I missed out on the one coin, so we have 99 points. A near-perfect score. And yes, that was a face palm to my head, because I cannot believe that I disregarded that other one when I wanted to grab that before we went on any further. Oh well. Okay, cool. We gain an extra life, so we have ourselves 11 lives overall. Well, 121 overall, but we managed to collect 11 lives in that whole ordeal. But, roulette is very useless in this game. I don't know why they put it in there, but I guess they just wanted to... I guess they just wanted to put in a bit more variety in the bonus challenges in the minigame, so they had to do something regardless. Okay, and... This is an icy stage. Be careful. It is slippery and difficult to walk. Grab a red watermelon and you can breathe fire three times. Use it to melt ice or attack your enemies. Yeah, I figured there was going to be a fire melon somewhere. And it would make sense to have a fire melon in. Oh my gosh, there is Rip Von Fish right there. And he's going to give us trouble with trying to uh, spray water at us. And cool, we hit that question mark cloud and that's going to create a bridge for us. Uh oh! Looks like somebody's gonna be playing sacrifice. Looks like we're gonna be playing sacrifice with somebody here, and we can't do it for the fake cheap cheap. So we're gonna have to do it for Mr. Penguin here. Are you one of Mr. Papa's penguins? I know it was a it's a really famous book, and I know Jim Carrey starred in the movie, but I tech I personally have not seen the movie myself, so I really can't comment on that. No! Okay. Let's try it again. And we managed to bypass that, so... Oh, cool, we got, we got a cheap cheat that's sparkling. Now that is very odd. And we hit ourselves a bucket right here. Give me my bucket! I want that bucket right now before the Lawrus comes and gets it! <laughs> and I still haven't even forgotten that internet meme like Lolcat. Lawrus. This is my bucket. I want it now. Leave my bucket alone or else I'm gonna go ape mad. Or ape nuts. Okay, cool. We got another fire. Oh, we got another fire melon where we're gonna be fireballs. Fireballs? Oh, yeah. We're gonna be fireballs. Ah, fireballs. Yum. Yum, yum. I guess fireballs are really yummy for the Yoshis. Specific, especially when they eat potaboos and all that. Okay, so no more flowers coming out of your mouth, so... What do we get? Ah, fire melon. And we get ourselves a metal ring right here. Interesting. Oh, I see what we're gonna do. We're gonna be Star Mario. Or Starman Mario. Or powerful infant Mario, who's going to be raising some, or raising some hell against most of these enemies. I have to tell you, one of the uses for uh, infant Mario is actually going to be pretty trippy when we come to it. But I think that's in the next world after we get past that, so I can't really uh, comment it that much about that. So, or I really can't comment that much about that in this. Uh, for this week, since we are going to be in World 5. Okay, looks like we're not going to be able to make it back. Evid uh, I think what that door is, it leads us to a shortcut to the next area, which I think is here. No, not here, but the next area over. But if you want to do this part of the level, you can. You can get some extra extra coins, so that way you can get some 1-ups, but you're going to want to have you're going to have to be careful because of all the penguins that are around, and they can bounce you back, and it really is not that cool when they do stuff like that. Come on. Okay. That's the... Oh, crap, 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 crap. Uh, that's okay. We can try it again. And see if we can try to get some more lives. I'm all up for that. Okay, so we're back to Helicopter Yoshi again. And we are going to go even further. But, you know, going back to the whole thing with Michael Pachter uh, saying that Nintendo has a grim future, 
I think one of th I think he's forgetting to realize what Nintendo needs to actually do when they release the Wii U is to make sure that they have a really strong launch lineup in from both the first and third party areas. Because if they get in games like Mario and Pikmin, and I'm not sure what other first party Nintendo title they could possibly get. Maybe even a Star Fox game, if Retro Studios is making one, if they can get one out before the Wii U launches. I think those would be some pretty good first party hardcore titles that people can expect. But in terms of third party, well, we already know that Nin Ninja Gaiden 3, Razor's Edge, and Darksiders 2, and Aliens Colonial Marines, Batman Arkham City, Assassin's Creed 3, they are games that are all going to be coming to the Wii U when it launches, so that's a good start, but what about some of those other ones? Oh, I don't know. Why am I not hitting those things? Okay. And evidently, I'm slipping on the ice. But what other third-party titles could try to come out for Nintendo that should come out for the Wii U when it launches? I know a lot of people will say, you know, that Resident Evil 6 should make it into the Wii U's launch, or it should become a launch title for the Wii U, and I definitely think that's something that Capcom should not pass up, because... OH NO 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 OH! I lost my train of thought when I was talking. But anyway, we'll try it again. But the thing is, what I was trying to say is that if Capcom can get Resident Evil 6 as a launch as a launch title for the Wii U, then I think that will execute a really strong launch for the system. And it will probably be one of the best launch lineups for something that's HD related. And I think a lot of people would agree with me on that. You know, I think Nintendo, uh, from what people are seeing from Nintendo, in terms of the third-party games and the first-party titles that they could potentially put out, and the ones that are already announced, I think there's a lot of potential that they could actually do really well in making this launch go very successful. And we had those seagulls there. I know they have a different n I know there's a name for those, but we're not going to worry about them at the moment. So, we're going to go skiing finally, yes! And while we're skiing, we're going to be trying to get the red coins while we go down hills. And try to get the flowers, but evidently we're going to be missing out on a lot of those flowers. So, we're going to have to do our best to try to make it out of here without getting ourselves hurt. Anyway, let's try it again. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to ace this level, but we'll have to see. I really like the skiing part. It really adds more to the gameplay. I wonder what I should do next for my uh, live commentary series, the retro one. I'm heavily thinking about doing Battletoads or the Ninja Gaiden games. I think the Ninja Gaiden games would act uh, on the NES would actually be good candidates. And I know this may come out of my this may be strange to come out of my mouth for saying this, but I'm highly thinking about possibly doing a let's play or a retro live commentary let's play on the game Super Godzilla. And <laughs> I bet you probably didn't even see that coming. And you know, I really haven't seen a whole lot of let's plays for that game done except for this one guy. And I watched uh, one of his first videos and he's commenting on uh, how bad it is. While the game may be bad, but at least he wasn't really commentating a whole lot on the gameplay. I mean, he did commentate at some parts, for the, but for the most part, it just seems like he was constantly complaining about how horrible it is. And, yeah, I really cannot even stand that. Anyway, we did ace this level. Very good. So yeah, Super Godzilla on the Super Nintendo may be a possible candidate. I mean, I've been always wanting to do something that's Godzilla related for uh, for a long time, and that might be a game to start off with that or uh, Godzilla on the NES, but uh, I still need some time to play that game. I mean, that, that, that game is... Uh, even though it's pretty hard, but uh, I need some time to try to warm up to it. To see if I have a good chance to try and... Uh, what do you call it? See if I have a chance to try and... Uh, what do you... And see if I can get around that game. Now, evidently, it seems I can't even do anything to Mr. Chomp right there. Why am I not doing anything to Chain Chomp? Ugh. 
Did they just leave that enemy there just to waste your time? There's got to be a point right there. There must have been like a flower or something, but evidently I'm not going to waste any more time. I, I'd say we're just going to continue on. So yeah, here we are at this fort, and I kind of forgotten the name of what the slime creature is that we're going to be fighting against. But let me tell you, this slime creature is not like Salvo the Slime, as this slime creature is actually a bit bigger. He's more hairy, and, uh, and he seems a lot nastier. Did we get something? Yes, we do. There is a hidden question mark cloud here. And we got ourselves some stars. Nice! Okay, so... Let's go up these stairs. Oh, not only have I been... Uh... Uh, my my week's also been going pretty fine, especially with work and all that, and and you know I really didn't even think that. I mean, when I started off work, I had somebody who was a partner of mine, but uh, evidently uh, he's not putting any effort in trying to come into work. So I think, uh, well, there were times when he was trying to come into work, but evidently he wasn't putting in enough effort to be committed to the job. So. Uh, I think he got fired, and now I'm stuck without anybody, so I'm gonna have to wait and see if somebody else can come along, but for for the most part, it seems like I'm gonna be getting more hours now. Well, which is a good thing, but uh, I really don't wanna... I really don't... Yeah, it's those slime creatures right there. They, they look a bit more rotted, and they're moldy, and... <laughs> I really do not want to fight one of those guys, but evidently we have to. But yes, my new job, somebody evidently uh, is getting fired, or he already got fired, and uh, now it's up to me to put in some more extra effort at work. But it's about 20 hours a week, so I can't really complain. That's a good number of hours for a week. Well, for part-time anyway. But it's good to know that I'm still working at the job, regardless, so... But, uh, anyway, what I was trying to say is not only have I been doing a lot at work this past week, but I've also been watching, or, uh, I've also, uh, what do you call it? I've been putting in some time to watch some things from my past childhood, in terms of videos that are on YouTube or wherever I can find them on the internet, but I or whatever DVDs that I can find from the video store, but I've also been watching... what do you call it? I've been watching... Okay, can I get up there? I'm gonna have to... I'm gonna have to try to jump up there. Yeah, I don't think we can... Get up there. There we go. I've been trying to watch Looney Tunes, that's what I've been trying to say. The old... A uh, classic Warner Brothers cartoon, not the new Looney Tunes show, where the first season was uh, kind of lackluster because it was definitely missing a lot of the, what do you call it, it was definitely missing a lot of the slapstick elements that we love from the Looney Tunes series, and I didn't really want to waste my time with that quite a whole lot because I, whenever, whenever I watch Looney Tunes, I really don't think of plot or this big in-depth plot in terms of a show. I really think of the Looney Tunes just uh, just doing a lot of slapstick comedy things like uh, blowing themselves up with dynamite and uh, getting beat up all the time and you know cracking jokes and all that. That's classic stuff right there. And I'm really uh, and that's the kind of stuff that I like. But that's kind of that's one of the things that I was really kind of disappointed with with the new Looney Tunes show is that they really don't even try to do any of the slapstick stuff. They kind of focus more on this plot where both Bugs and Daffy are roommates, and they uh, live in this apartment, and they try to do their best to survive, but Daffy Duck doesn't even know how to live like a person because he always seems to goof up a whole lot, and there really isn't that much that's slapstick related in terms of the Looney Tunes universe. So, that's one of the things that, uh, that really, really irked me when I saw the first episode. I was like, what in the world am I watching? I mean, I do like the voice acting, and, 
and what do you call it? I do like the voice acting and the animation style that they use for the characters, but where's the slapstick? Where's the stuff that we love about Looney Tunes? I don't see it. But I heard that in the second season that, uh, what, from what the, uh, what the creators of the show said, that they are going to try to go back, or they're definitely going to be going back to the whole, to the old nature of what Looney Tunes is supposed to be about. So, I guess it's not all a total loss, but it's kind of hard to say at this point, so we gotta, so I guess we're going to have to wait until we figure out what, what they do, or until what we, we're going to have to wait until what they show us. Probably we won't see anything until, I guess, I, I would say until the summer, or sometime very shortly. But I say if there was anything event-wise that they would show this kind of stuff to us, then I say we would have to wait until Comic-Con. At least. Can we get over there? Get up there! Oh, no, 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 no! Dang it! Crap! Okay, let's go ahead and bypass this part, and we'll, uh, just grab that coin there, and then we'll just go inside this door. But yeah, anyway, what I was saying is that, uh, I'm not really in favor of the new Looney Tunes show. I mean, it may appeal to a cult following, but, but in terms of, uh, where it is right now, I definitely think that the people who are creating this cartoon, they definitely need to go back and watch Looney Tunes and to learn what it truly is, all, what it truly is supposed to be about. And, uh, I really would like it if Mel Blanc's son actually end up doing the voices for the Looney Tunes characters because, you know, it's one of those things. You gotta respect a father's legacy, and I think that's what Mel Blanc's son really does when he portrays the Looney Tunes is that, the Looney Tunes is that he, uh, respects his father's legacy on how well he does, he portrays the voices for all the characters like he did back during the golden age of animation. And I think it must be very honorable to be the son of a father who is considered to be known as the man of a thousand voices. And of course, with the golden age of, golden age of animation, that means we've seen the Looney Tunes, we've seen the Hanna-Barbera cartoons, we see the uh, Droopy cartoons or the Merwin Golden Meyer cartoons, I think that's what they're called. And uh, we also seen... Uh, oh jeez, I can't even remember. And the Disney cartoons too. Yeah, now that I think about it. So yeah, lots of good stuff back then in comparison to now, where most of the stuff that we see now is nothing but garbage. Mostly. Can I get there without even hurting myself? No, I cannot. <laughs> and the eggs were still jumping after Yoshi got knocked out by the thorns. Okay, we're just gonna leave those alone. And that coin is not really a red one, so we can just disregard that. We get some starmen? No, but we do have some coins, and we do have 30 stars on us right now. That's good. That's good, right? Yeah, I thought so. Okay, so is there anything else that I want to talk about before we get this episode completed? Oh, not that I can think of. So, uh... Yeah, let's just go ahead and finish this up, and... We will conclude this video. Finally. And no, that is not a red coin right there. As it was just created from the egg that hatched. Or, no, that did not hatch. The one that I threw. Okay, what do we get up here? We get something cool. Oh, cool! We got ourselves a one-up! Me likey. Stay down and don't get hit by the, th by the thorns or anything. Gosh. <laughs> oh, and uh, one other classic animation cartoon that I forgot to mention, too, that was really popular with the Looney Tunes and with, you know, Disney and uh, Droopy and all the Hanna-Barbera cartoons was uh, Tom and Jerry. Definitely. Definitely Tom and Jerry. Good stuff. Okay, we're finally we finally bypassed that part, so let's go ahead and eat these slimes, these old slimes, I'd like to call them, and we are going to fight off against the boss. The old slime, I guess you could say, the old slime boss, or I know it has a different name, but uh, 
evidently I was too wrapped up in talking, so... We'll just leave it at that. Now this boss fight is actually going to be very interesting, and you shall see why once we get on with it. And there's the slime right there. Oh, and hey, there's Kamek. Ah, Yoshi! To get this far, you must be powerful! But remember! This slug has no weak points! <laughs> oh, the slug may not have weak points in its current state, but where there's an enemy, or where there's something, there is always bound to be a weakness. And yes, this slug has a weakness with its heart that's in the middle. And we have to use our eggs to try to aim for the heart that's inside the slime. And evidently, we're not doing that fantastic of a job since we seem to be missing the heart. But we got the heart on, it on the first try. I think you have to do this three or four times. Okay. You know, when the bosses take hits, it sounds like somebody's saying Rick Rolled. <laughs> and and I am, I'm not going to be doing that... Uh, I'm not going to be doing that internet meme, it's just that that's what it sounds like when the enemies, when the bosses take damage. Okay, finally. That was the fourth hit, and the slime is going bye-bye. Oh, that looked nasty for it to slime down, I mean, for it to fall down off like that. What is his name supposed to be? The, uh... The Smog Monster in Godzilla, or Hedera the Smog Monster. I do not want to think that. And we missed two red coins again, so... Looks like we got two perfects, and we got two near perfects for this video. Alright gamers, since we have taken care of that, we are going to go ahead and we're going to stop things right here. So, in the next episode tomorrow, we are going to get through the last four levels of World 5, finally. Alright gamers, take care of yourselves, and I shall see you tomorrow for another episode of Double RPG Let's Play Live Commentary with Super Mario World 2 Yoshi's Island on the Super Nintendo. This is Double RPG, signing off. Later gamers!